Hey guys, on this clip I want to talk a little bit about market conditions and the current market conditions and can you invest for cash flow in this market and where are the deals coming from, how are you finding them, etc, etc. I've had a couple questions about that. Nate, the market's so high, how can I invest? Currently, right now, as I'm recording this, it's middle of June 2019, and I would very much agree, I think the market is very high um, in a lot of areas. So to do what I did back in 2014, 2015, I'm beginning to ask the question, can you still do that? Can you still find the deals at cash flow like you did four or five years ago? And I will definitely tell you that it's harder to find those deals, and there's maybe some areas of towns or markets that I can't invest in anymore because they don't fit my metrics as the prices have risen. However, I definitely feel that you can still do what I've done four or five years ago now today. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. Um, the main example I want to give is about a year ago or a little over a year ago, my girlfriend Kate came to me and we were dating at the time and she said, Nate, I want to buy a rental property, you know. She had learned that I did rentals and she kind of learned a little bit about them and how I went about doing that. And she approached me. She said, I want to buy a rental property. So I told her, I asked her how much she had saved up and, you know, told her this is kind of the number, minimum number you would need to save up to find these deals. And, you know, I could probably find you a deal if you had this X amount saved up. So she wasn't quite there yet. She went about saving that money up kind of gave me a timeline where she thought she'd have it saved up. So I started looking for deals. This was in late 2018. We really started looking hard and it took a while. I'm not going to lie to you. I looked through many, many deals as my first deal with my girlfriend, you know, so I wanted it to go well, <clears throat> didn't want to uh, have, you know, have it be a disaster or anything like that. So did a lot of due diligence, turned over a lot of stones, try to find the right deal to start her off. We ended up putting, uh, three single family homes under contract late 2018 I think it was beginning to mid November we put them under contract they're in a market in Wisconsin a newer market to me that looked very good metrics wise went and visited them looked good great layouts they were four four bedroom houses so there are three four bedroom houses I should correct myself three properties each of them had four bedrooms market rents were right around twelve hundred dollars what they were getting currently with the ability, if we remodeled, I felt to get them up to about 1400 It was near a college university, so the kids rented them out by the bedrooms. 300 a bedroom was pretty standard, and the nicer ones were getting but at 350 which would be the 1400 a month. The whole portfolio costed, I think it was like high 250s. One was like 257 or something like that. It was, it was an odd number, but it was just shy of 260000 for all three properties. Same seller. So now you could ask the question, well, did Kate have the 20%? So if it was $260,000, $52,000 saved up to buy these properties. No, she did not. So again, that technically you're like, oh, that's out of my price range. I don't have $52,000. No, you can be creative with this. So Kate went to the seller and we negotiated a 15% second mortgage. And what that amounted to is Kate had to come up with about $13,000. And that was about kind of the number she had. She's like, okay, I can make that work. Along with that, when we went to closing, and I can get into more details if you want later, but you can play with things as far as we had a credit of a realtor fee of 2%. There were security deposits, cash due at closing. When Kate went to closing, she got those three properties for I think it was like four to $5,000 out of her pocket which was a lot less than she was thinking she was gonna to have to spend. And she's gonna to have to replenish the uh, operating account with cash flow to offset some security deposits, et cetera, et cetera. But she's into this for four to $5,000. She has these three houses, they're in good shape, they're very rentable, very marketable. And the cash flow of all of them, when said and done, I wanna say it was like $1,400 or something like that. It was over $1,000 a month cash flow per um for this all this uh three houses i think per property was like four to five hundred dollars is what we figured it out to be so she has this she's in the game she purchased that right at the beginning and closed on them the beginning of 2019 when this market was high then about two months later i think it was either february or march we were looking at trying out a new loan program in the same market a future appraised value um, program through a lender over there and I found some houses 
and I thought that they would work very, very well for this. They were in a decent area, in bad need of repair, and some cash injections, very tired assets. And I said, Kate, these look pretty good. They were two houses connected side by side, two different parcels, but right next to each other, same owner. I said, let's try to negotiate this, let's try this. I think there's a lot of room for error, and we'll see how it goes. So we went in and negotiated. We got both the houses for 105,000 or 525 each. We went to the bank and said we needed a $50,000 construction loan to repair the houses. So all in we would be in to the houses for 155,000. Now what the bank did with that plan and then we also had to show rent projections. So I think the rents currently were like $700 a month and some of these places were barely livable. And afterwards, we projected they would be about $1,300 a month. And they were four bedroom houses again with pretty close to the university. We went in, they ran the after repair value of that. The appraisals came back. Those two houses, if we pull this off, we're right in the middle of this. So we're, that's our main project this summer is renovating these two houses in that market. If we pull this off, the appraisals showed to come back at $295,000. So Kate is into them for 155 and they're going to be valued at 295 when she's all said and done. She just instantly created wealth or equity, whatever you want to call it, of $140,000. Not to mention, again, I love cash flow. These two houses will cash flow about $1,000 a month between the two of them, not, not each of them. So we closed on that at the beginning of April for Kate. So that was April 2019. She had three houses in January 2019. She's probably not going to buy anything the rest of 2019 as she's very much expanded very rapidly in 2019. But for the people that think you cannot do this, I want you to think about what I just explained to you. She went, she's got about four or five thousand dollars invested in these houses, and she's built a portfolio now of five single family homes that cash flow when all said and done were up to market rents over two thousand dollars a month for four to five thousand dollars guys not to mention debt pay down pay down not to mention the hundred and forty thousand dollars she created in equity instantly so if kate wants to go buy uh three four hundred thousand dollar purchase somewhere she could pull that equity instantly if she wanted to is she going to maybe maybe not but she can, she can leapfrog again to another deal without ever bringing money out of her own pocket. That is so cool, guys, and still very, very doable in today's market. It was a very fun experience for me to go back and help her do it, figure out how to use limited funds to get to uh, a scale, if you will. You know, she's got that rent portfolio will be right around $7,000 rent roll a month. You know, I think we want to get her to 10 and kind of see where she likes and she likes it. Maybe we'll go a little bigger, but she doesn't want to get that big. But we went from zero to seven in basically a year's time. It was about this, this time of year last year she came to me and we started looking. We, we game planned it. You can do that. It doesn't matter. It might take you longer in a market to do it. Yes, the, mar the prices get high like they are today. You can still do this, guys, in any market you want as long as it has the cash flow metrics I talk about. So I don't want anybody to come to me anymore and say, oh, the market's too high. This, this doesn't work because it's so high this, so high that. Hogwash. You just need to look harder. You need to work harder to find the deals that work. And that's all it is. I'll give you another quick example. I had kind of done a lot of my stuff in 2014, 2016. Then my father, uh, we invested in a house back in college, kind of got out of that eventually and kind of sat idle for a little bit. Brought him back in around 2017, 2018, so two years ago about. And we built a portfolio. He had $5,000 into it. I had $5,000 into it. Today the portfolio is valued probably just shy of a million dollars of assets it holds. And that's it. 5,000, 5,000, it holds a million dollars of assets and it cash flows, I think, like $3,500 a month. Phenomenal return on investment, guys. You can do this. It doesn't matter. You didn't have to get in in 2011, 12, 13, 14. You can do it still today. You just need to put in the work. And that is what most people won't do. I love this quote. I, I, I try to remind myself of it when I'm doing things that I maybe don't want to do. 
But if you'll do what most people won't do, you'll have what most people won't have. I tirelessly look at deals to scrape through and find hidden value that I can add or things that are overlooked by other people. And that's how I find cash flowing assets, guys. That is how I do it. It's how I was taught to do it. And I don't think you, the things I was taught, you can learn super easy. The intangible stuff is staying up to two or three a.m. looking through deals, trying to find the right one. Will you do that? I can't answer that. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But when the rubber meets the road, a lot more people won't than will. And that's where you find the winners from the losers. That's where things get separated. Will you put in the work to find the deals in the tougher markets? Yes, maybe you want to sit up and stop buying a little bit or slow your buying in these higher markets, but you can still find the deals. You don't want to wait just because the market's high. You can still find very, very good deals in this market. Please don't let that be your determinant. Look harder, have good metrics, explore other markets. Fine, get creative. That's what I think you need to do in this market is get creative, guys. You can still do it. Please reach out with me with any questions you have, but hopefully that gives you some testimonial, some belief that you can do this, guys. My girlfriend, Kate, a year ago, no, no assets whatsoever in real estate. Now, if you want to include this house here, she has six houses, um, great rental portfolio, great cash flow, guys, very little money out of her pocket. Her life did not change whatsoever, and we're looking forward to doing more with her uh, LLC. Thanks, guys. Take care.